just to get uh, your sort of take on how the international uh, the media and particularly uh, international uh, watchdogs and, and, and various different organizations have been viewing this rather uh, liquid uh, takeover, one could say. Uh, straightforward, it seemed very much uh, 15 days it's been, but we're still without a, uh, an interim government uh, in Kabul, uh, so to speak. Uh, so a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, worry, I would suggest, perhaps uh, internationally, uh, particularly uh, those who say that uh, the lessons from uh, past uh, incursions into Afghanistan have not been learned and we cannot afford to leave a vacuum this time around. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Uh, I, I agree with you and uh, I believe the last time uh, the US diplomats and we all very infamously remember uh, Hillary Clinton uh, laying it out uh, clearly in front of everybody that the U.S. should not repeat the mistakes it made in the past regarding Afghanistan. And yet they choose to do the same. And uh, some might even argue that it was way worse this time. Uh, when you, The question that you basically asked as, if, uh, as in how the international media is viewing all this fluid situation and the way this entire takeover uh, took place. Uh, like uh, Ambassador Wazir uh, talked about the fact that the world uh, is kind of trying to come to terms with this 2.0 Taliban version, albeit with a lot of skepticism, uh, but uh, their ability to maneuver situations, to understand them, and then to negotiate because a lot of these victories that came in quick time were not just military victories. Uh, it's difficult to digest this fact, but uh, the support that they got or the lack of support for government troops uh, in, in, at some level uh, signifies some level of political victory as well. Uh, so these negotiations that went in during these military conflicts and uh, the negotiations with the U.S., they've kind of uh, uh, forced the world, the world media and everybody else to think again about who the Taliban really are and what are they actually dealing with right now. Now that they're in place, uh, there is a rising skepticism after the withdrawal of the United States, as we've seen uh, Senator, uh, U.S. Uh, Secretary of State, uh, Mr. Blinken, he was talking about the fact that uh, the aid would not be given directly to the Taliban and it would be channeled through international institutions and international bodies. So uh, those are certain facts being uh, viewed as a system of check and balance to keep the Taliban honest. And the international media is kind of, uh, I'd, uh, I'd hand it over to the Taliban that uh, they have convinced, not, not exactly, but uh, to a certain degree, the international media, that they might be able to uh, pull this one off without uh, uh, getting the same reputation that they had last time. And uh, your question regarding the future and uh, the state of Afghanistan, uh, the latest from Afghanistan right now, our sources tell us, is that the negotiations for government formation among the Taliban factions, uh, they've ended and uh, they uh, have announced or uh, they've will be announcing, I said they'll be announcing in a couple of weeks, but uh, our sources say that it'll be uh, earlier than that. So that will basically define as to the first reaction by the world, depending upon how the government is formed. As you said uh, earlier, like Pakistan has been repeatedly pointing out and uh, asserting the fact that the government in Afghanistan should be inclusive. It should not be exclusionary in any way, and it should represent the Afghan people. So. Once this first step takes place, only then we can imagine and only then we can, you know, d derive some sort of a conclusion uh, or extrapolate how this will move forward. And do the Taliban really have the capacity to operate a state at this point of time and that too with these new challenges?